We're off to Brisbane, Australia next to check out the inaugural Asia-Pacific Rising Stars Trophy 2013. The 2020 Round Robin event took place from the 12th to the 17th of August this year at Redlands Cricket Club. The tournament brought together four teams comprising Papua New Guinea, East Asia Pacific 11, Australian Services 11 and the Australian Indigenous 11. So the Asia Pacific Rising Stars Trophy um, is a, a new concept, it's in its first year this year, a collaborative effort between Cricket Australia and our office, the ICC, East Asia Pacific, to um, provide more cricketing opportunities for you know Indigenous cricketers from Australia but also for our guys from around the region. The ICC EAP, in partnership with Cricket Australia, has been tapping into the test playing nation's vast expertise opening a pathway for talented cricketers from the East Asia Pacific region to play professional cricket in Australia. Scholarships are offered to the region's promising players, providing them with some of the best coaches and facilities available in the country. This year, the ICC EAP office decided to push the boundaries even further. In previous years we'd had talent camps where the best players from the region had come into Cricket Australia's Centre of Excellence in Brisbane uh, and had gone through some, some training with uh, Cricket Australia's best coaches. Probably the feedback from those programs has been positive but after 10 years it was a time to review and really if we want these players to be taking the next step and, and continuing to improve then it was about playing more quality cricket more often on good facilities. So uh, the opportunity to have four teams in a tournament um, and connect with Australia through the Indigenous side and through the combined services uh, really ticked a lot of boxes for us. Cricket Australia's Indigenous Eleven showcased native talents that were selected from the 2013 Impaja Cup, an annual national Indigenous cricket carnival held in Alice Springs. I think it's been, it's, it's been a great test. Um, skill-wise against the other sides that we've been versing, but um, also to see where we're at leading into our own season. A lot of the boys are, are under 23, so there's a lot of development um, still to come. And I think tournaments like this uh, are definitely a step in the right direction uh, in the boys' development down the track. So um, it's been a great test, definitely. For Papua New Guinea, who've already booked a place in the ICC World T20 2013 qualifier in the UAE, this tournament provided an excellent platform for them to prepare for the November event. The ICC associate member, who will also be playing in the ICC Cricket World Cup 2015 final qualifying round next year, is the leading nation in the EAP region. So it came as little surprise when they made it all the way to the final in the Asia Pacific Rising Stars Trophy. The team conceded only one defeat in the round robin stage, and that was to its eventual opponent, the EAP 11. So it's going to be, I think they're going to come out strong, uh, as usual. Um, they're a very passionate um, group of guys. They've got, obviously, they got three of our PNG boys with them, which uh, helps them a lot. So they'll, they've got a lot of inside, inside information, um, which would help them. And, and um, it'll be good for us, good challenge for us. Um, I think if we play to our best, uh, we should be able to take, uh, go away with, a, with the trophy today. It, it'll be a big honor beating them, especially you know, playing against them. I know these boys really well. Me especially um, with a confidence, um, also trying to get in selection for the team for the Saka and the Dubai. The EAP 11 comprised of selected players from some of the associate and affiliate members in the East Asia Pacific region such as Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Vanuatu, Samoa and Japan. We've got Lega Siaka from Papua New Guinea. He's a young guy, 21, 22, bowls beautiful leg spin and is a really, really classy batter. So I think he's a, a star of the future. And um, also Jelani Chilia from Vanuatu, really good young off spinner, has worked really hard over the, the last couple of months at the um, camps at the Centre of Excellence here in Queensland. And I think he could go a long way with his cricket. While Papua New Guinea and the EAP 11 were preparing for their final clash later in the day, the Australian Indigenous 11 clinched third place in the playoff against the Australian Services 11. Oh, it was a bit of fun out there. The boys uh, did well. It was good the, uh, in the end. Uh, it's what you want, with, you know, pressure situation. So uh, the boys did really well. Yeah. Come afternoon, it was the two finalists' turn. Papua New Guinea took to the field after the EAP 11 won the toss and decided to bat first. Two early wickets, but the middle order from the EAP 11 fought to keep the boat afloat and steered the side to a competitive 137. Papua New Guinea, on the other hand, got off to a flying start, 
Although the EAP side took some early scalps, it was not enough to stop the eventual champions from claiming the trophy by three wickets. The victory was a welcome boost for PNG's confidence as they prepare to take one step closer to the world stage come November. Their success is testimony to the efforts the ICC East Asia Pacific had put into promoting the growth of cricket in the region. As of last year, more than 220,000 people were playing the game. We've seen a lot of growth, so there's more people actually playing our game. Our next challenge is to transition those into regular participants in club structured club competitions and then seeing that talent feed through into national programs. Uh, once we see that talent come through then we'd like to see more competitive teams on the world stage. Wouldn't it be great to see Papua New Guinea playing Australia in a one-day international in 10 years time. With the enthusiasm for cricket increasing in non-traditional cricketing nations and the passion for the sport fast catching up, there might come a time when some of these countries could be standing tall amongst the current test playing nations. And Papua New Guinea will certainly be looking to mount a credible challenge when the occasion arises.